It's the breeze, 93.9. Let's uh, go back into the KUAM News Zoom room where uh, Legislative uh, Tourism, Health, Land, and Justice Chair, Senator Therese Terlahi, is um, standing by. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Good morning, Bree, Chris, morning. Uh, Jason, everyone there at KUAM. Good morning, and good morning to the listeners. I didn't know um, if you knew that we had an um, impromptu uh, GVB board meeting uh, just a few minutes ago. <laughs> that really no, it's great. You had uh, the, 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 the president and the vice president and the uh, GIAA uh, president. That's great. They heard we had Thanksgiving baluta, and that's why everybody was coming in. Uh, but Senator, let's just start there. If you want to unpack anything in that interview, uh, any comment on anything that was uh, said um, as the tourism chair? Well, I, I'm just glad that GVB continues to work. And they seem to, um, I think they are helping us, uh, the government, to lead this fight against COVID. And they know that we have to stop the COVID in order to open up the travel, open up the entire industry. So it all works together and it's very critical. So I, I was just very grateful that since the very start, they have helped to, you know, spread the word about the COVID app. They've helped to uh, get the businesses to comply with the guidelines, to write guidelines. They've actually put, you know, uh, assistance out uh, together with GHRA to help those businesses write out their own plans. And that's what, you know, public health is requiring. So, you know, so the government and the business working together, I think GVB has been very instrumental in that. I think for me, though, it, it I wish that uh, there was more dialogue and more communication between uh, these industry uh, leaders and the physicians advisory group, whether or not, you know, they participate in the, the meetings that they have, um, even if it's just like a, a small portion of the meeting. So we're not seeing what we just heard about. We had this plan and then, oh, no, 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 no. They came back and they said, we can't do this plan now. We got this other plan and, and we'll know, you know, the, the physician's advisory group has their own strategy, but it's not necessarily a plan. Uh, but we've got this end to end uh, plan. You know what I mean? It's just Ooh, like, boy. couldn't we have just kind that of avoided down. that? And... Sabrina, you put it down. But it's, uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but Chris described it as a cha-cha. It is a little bit of that because we've got, we've got to, you know, work with the government is doing one thing and then we've got the private sector trying to do something we've got to mesh them together and uh you know uh make them work together and not duplicate or you know do things that we don't need to do and concentrate on those that we still need to do and that's really uh unfortunately yeah what i've found is um it's almost like anybody can make and all of the plans that they want but if public health is not on board mm. you know we're going to have a problem because pu public health pretty much has to you know, approve all the plans, all the opening of businesses. Public health is who is literally getting those those new types of test kits that are going to be coming in, the one that we want to use at the airport. They're the ones, I think, who are going to be receiving custody of that. So absolutely, they have to sign on to, you know, this plan. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I think that's why the surgeon cells involved, because they are, you know, it's this, it's a mixture of government and, and private uh, resources. Right. So when anytime the government resources are involved, public health is going to be involved and the surgeon cell is going to be involved. And yeah. surgeon cell is supposed to be helping us to get re federal reimbursement with everything we do if that's possible. So we just, it has to be coordinated that way. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're right. I mean, sometimes it gets frustrating. We can't, I've asked them the same question, you know, sometimes uh, surgeons are just, uh, you know, well, does public health, who's leading this? Are you leading this or is public health leading this? Who Who is leading this? And uh, yeah, who's going to make the ultimate decisions on it? Both of those entities will tell us. The governor will make the decision, I guess. Yeah, so the discussion, you know, it it, it goes around. Yeah. And, and don't forget, yeah, like you said, we also have the physician's advisory group, which is different than the surgeon cell. Right. Right. And that, yeah, very, yeah. So it's, it's a very confusing, but it, yeah, and I, and I think, yeah. Everybody, and then it, ultimately they all look to public health and say, oh, we're waiting for public health or, you know, public health this, public health that. And, you know, even me, I always try to call public health in and say, you know, what's your progress? You know, where are these businesses are all waiting for you. Are we up to speed? You know, tourism, we're waiting for you to, you know, everything pretty much uh, uh, our ability to stop COVID and open up travel is going to rely heavily on public health. Right. And so, but I'm very appreciative. GVB has very, been very helpful, I yeah. think. They're definitely staying busy. You know, talking about a uh, public health center, I saw you had a release about public health and the CARES um, Act yes. funds. Go ahead. 
it's just, you know, so we're the last stretch of uh, the money is going to be spent by December. So in this last stretch, I was just uh, wanting to ask one more time if there's any additional funds that could uh, from this CARES money that could be put to public health. And the reason is because even though public health has received, it's about 500,000 straight out for public health, uh, the rest of the money that public health received from this 117 million were for like, um, you know, uh, assistance plans. And so they really, uh, it just, they're just a pass through. They don't use that money at all. That was passing through to families. But for them to, you know, expand their operations is really what I was concerned about especially because we keep going back to the tracing, the tracing. If it, the tracing is slow, if they get overwhelmed, you know, we feel bad for them, but boy, that doesn't help us to open up our businesses, right? And it's not making us move, we, we, and we need to move. And everybody wants to see um, confidence that we are going to be able to open up. So so I just think it's very, very important that we, we put those resources to these people who have to do the guidelines they have to you know make sure that the guidelines are are going to make us safe mm -hmm. they have to do the inspections they have to do the actual testing uh we've tried to you know we've shared that out now with private clinics and different entities to do testing as well tracing you know we've uh, again tried to urge them to expand more and more there's tracing capacity throughout guam not just the government but all guam private entities are now joining in but, but public health itself still needs, I think, to, to boost up as fast as possible. And sometimes, you know, it, it just feels like it's, uh, it's not as fast as possible, even though they are working as fast as possible. I think. But, Senator, so that's why this was my last push. If there's any of that money that can go to public health, I think it should go there. I just think, you know, I don't think anybody's super confident with the capacity right now to handle surges and to to get every, you know, to get us where we need to be in order to open up the businesses. So I just, still, everybody agrees that's still the goal. So I just, I just wanted to make sure that there's some money that can get to that. Did you so say, that that's not did you say a half a million was uh, provided to public health out of the 117 million? Yes. Well, that's what they've received uh, 200 for uh, public health expenses. It says uh, 300 for COVID testing. And uh, that's the specific allocations. They also, of course, their overtime was paid as part of the 18 million that was paid government wide. Mm -hmm. So their, their overtime was also covered. We don't know the specific amount of overtime, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm, I'm talking about building capacity, grow, you know, um, making it bigger that, especially the tracing. Mm -hmm. So is public health though receiving other uh, uh, yes. federal funds though? Yes, right? they do receive. Yeah, they received lots of uh, other federal funds, but there a lot of them, you know, some of it was for the aid, right? Mm. Some of it was for expansion. I mean, of course, the labs, right? They received additional money for those labs, uh, the testing. So yes, they do. But um, when we have these oversights, we still come back to, you know, whether they are at full capacity, whether they are at optimal capacity, where, where Guam is ready to... You know, I don't know. I just think it's obvious if we're having these spikes that, yeah, we we need to concentrate more on that, and we can't afford anymore. You mm -hmm. know, what if that happens in the schools? We we have to be prepared to stop them and curb them. What do you, you think of the car score? Um, well, I I you know, of course, I've been hearing different things. Uh, it's a it's a good tool. I think it's a good tool. I I think they did it thinking it was going to be easier for us to understand one number versus, you know, the combination of hospital admissions, you know, people on the ventilators versus, you know, at positive. So I don't know. I, I rather that they hear, um, personally, I rather people keep hearing how many are going to the hospital because these, this is what's going to move them. I'm not criticizing what they're suggesting. So that's fine with me, but I just think if we want to keep people out of the hospital, we got to tell them every day how many people are going into the hospital, who they are. I mean, you know, not not their, just about them. You know, right. these were people yeah. who got infected because they did these things or what happened, right? And so that the rest of the people in Guam can be spared from that. That's really the goal. And so that's why, you know, that's another thing. Information from public health, you know, they are compiling information. But since the very beginning, you know, we've been urging them to 
get this information out. But that's the type of information. You know, I don't need to know the names of the people in there. But uh, if I know, you know, how they think they got infected, I think that's very important. And mm -hmm. it's going to help us so much to to spread that out. Right. Yeah, and we try, Senator. We try. We get. Uh, we try and get Lillian on every couple of days. We were getting Annette Uggen of the contact tracing team, but yes. there's some kind of CDC thing on Fridays now, so we haven't been able to get her. But you're right. I, I think that it's important that um, the car score is just that's just their baby. They're going to ride this into the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but the other numbers, the hospitalizations, the test uh, positivity rate, all that other stuff. I think. Yeah. People have gotten used to, and they're very valuable um, numbers to look at. Um, you're right in terms of who's getting it, how are they getting it. I mean, yeah, there definitely needs to be more consistent information coming. And, up. and I think uh, Dr. Ann Pobutsky, she was uh, admitted, you know, that they've been trying to get out this report more, which has more detailed information. And so when they moved over to the ITC building. Uh, at the same time, they kind of announced that instead of the daily sit reports, we're going to do it weekly. And, and hopefully I, I, it'll have all the uh, additional information that everybody's been um, clamoring about. But I, I did want to go back to the CARES Act funds because there is a report that's on the legislature's website. And this is actually uh, what we were asking Mr. Byrne about um, last week when he came on about the out of the one hundred seventeen million dollars or eighteen million dollars if he rounded up, what have we spent it on? And so, have mm -hmm. you had a chance to look at that report? And and did I read this correctly that there's still forty one million dollars that has not been spent? That's correct. But if you remember, they gave us a budget early on, mm -hmm. so the forty one dollars is budgeted uh you know i, I think uh bb mars calls it another word like you know allocated mm -hmm. but just not um not uh spent spent yet uh but that's why i'm saying if we still have flexibility they're doing a call out to the agencies right now are you going to be able to spend this money and i'm just saying if there's any money left please that you know i think public health could definitely use more and and you know, we're creating a new world going forward, you know, a new uh, way of living in, in public health. This system has to be with us the whole time, I think. So the more we can put there, the better. Right. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because a lot of the money, the, like you said, it gives them the budget. And then you look at the expenditures and some of these uh, agencies um, that were given money haven't spent the money which uh leaves us with that 41 million dollars so who do you need to talk to to try and reallocate this money well i mean the legislature really can't because it's federal money well they're they're telling us that we can't tell them how to spend that money so i'm just suggesting and you know when they came to every oversight hearing that we've had budget hearings we asked them again and again you know, how much CARES money are you getting? What are you spending it on? You know, why aren't you getting more? And that was between me and public health. This has been our dialogue since May. I've asked them, why aren't you getting more of those? Why isn't more of the CARES money budgeted for you? You are the lead agency. And so at the time, Linda said, you know, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, you're right. We'll request more. So she requested for 3 million more. Since then, we've been going back and forth. In our, in our oversight hearings as to whether they've received the 3 million more, just 3 million. And it was never confirmed in August. They said, okay, yes, we're receiving that now, or we've been told, but I, I still can't, it's not reflected in this October statement, right? That they received that. So, so I don't know, but uh, that's why I'm just saying, uh, I, I don't think public health is where it needs to be. And they, and they are working very hard, but yeah, I just think if we are going to, live like this and our businesses are going to to open they need to be at full capacity right. so we have to we capacity. have to spend this 41 million before the end of the year yes right. wow. or we have to give it back right yeah so they said they're going to spend it but you know of course i just you know it's always a matter of priorities it's a what's critical what's not critical what do we need? You know, of course we can, we can add things to every agency to, but what do we really need? And what, what is the best use of the money to open up the business? So 
I'm just making a suggestion again. You know, I've made it all different kinds of ways. I've made it to the surgeon cell, to the physicians that I can talk to, to the, um, you know, Ed Byrne, uh, BBMR, public health, you know, and I've, I've tried to get public health to be the ones put their foot down and demand it, you know, and um, because they are really carrying a huge burden, I think. They are really carrying a burden. When it comes to implementing any program that the government wants to implement, any executive order, public health is the one. They have to stop what they're doing, come up with the guidelines and, uh, you know, enforce and now enforce those. And that's why I was amazed that they're, they're going to be in charge of enforcement, which is, yeah, they need people if they're going to. They, they definitely and also, it seems like if we can only use the CARES Act for COVID-related expenses, that public health would probably have the most of those. Right. Well, I'm sure that they could probably justify, all, you know, spending the right. $117 million in, the, in all kinds of ways. But I'm just saying, if we want to open faster, then let's get public health up to speed faster, you know? And, and yeah, back to that information that we were talking about. Yeah, so they're going to be issuing weekly reports. They've been, you know, they told us this maybe a month or two ago. At, and so we're very much looking forward to those reports. We hope they're helpful in this way where we can stop the spread, right? But it looks like we've got a trade-off going on now where they're not going to be issuing some daily information and that we have to wait for weekly. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. that has to be why yeah. we can't just get all the information you guys make good use of this information and we've seen your guests make you know other uses of this information that yeah. just give us a new a new look at it and right. i think the more eyes the better yeah and i mean I, ideally in a perfect world that breakdown of that information that we get from our guests like doc i know you're talking about dr lombard ideally that mm -hmm. should be done by public health but i mean they're kind of busy yeah. right Right, so they're doing their breakdown a certain way, yeah, and then, uh, you know, Dr. Lombard does it a, a, a slightly different way, which I appreciate. I, I'm telling you, the more the more ways to look at this, the better, because it's going to open our eyes to something new. For example, GVB, you know, trying to work with the airport and, you know, private businesses to do their own testing and uh, kind of app to trace you, right? It's excellent. It's exactly what this COVID app, I think, is supposed to be doing with the government. Is the government supposed to be doing this for all of Guam? Uh, but it just, uh, I think they're getting, you know, like they don't feel like they're covered yet because uh, maybe there's some delays on the government side. So so together, yes, it might work very well, but I, I still have a lot of faith in get the government side working as well as it could because you know, Guam's not that big and we should be able to just handle it all, you know, with the, the, the plans are very similar. It's you test everybody you can and then you, you when you get positive, you sh you've got them all linked up so you can trace the positive and you can let anyone who was near that positive case know right away. And those people can go in again and get tested. It's that same thing over and over. We just have to keep doing it and we can't like let it go. Chris, put that app back on your phone, please, because uh, you are one of our leaders. You're setting the example. And I still think that that, that public health app, you know, we need it. And, and it, we ask the same questions of this public health app that GVB is asking of this private app. Yeah. Can we require government employees to, to hook up to the app, right? Yeah. Can we require businesses who want to open to require their customers to hook up to the app? That way we cover all the island. And yeah. it really, and the key is so that if you were exposed, you know faster. You don't, it's that five days not knowing, non asymptomatic, where that's where the spread is occurring. And we're trying to stop that spread on day one. Uh, I'm sorry, that, Senator. I just deleted it. I was just frustrated because, you know, one of my kids got COVID and, and they didn't even call until like a um, week and a half later. And I just, you know, it's just like, see, forget it. What's the point? See, these stories of their, everybody's individual That's what experience. everybody says. But when you get public uh, health, they're like, oh no, we're all caught up in the contact tracing. Right. They, they will tell us they're up to, up to date, you know, that they've caught up. And, but I keep hearing the same, just, I'm, I'm sorry for your son, Chris. And, uh, but I, yeah, I hear this every day, every day. I hear employees are not being told when co-employees are have, you know, tested positive. And I don't understand what are these businesses thinking, you know, so we all have to work together. I think we have to share information and we've got to get everybody to protect themselves, to stay home. If they are in that period of exposure, stay home. 
Senator. Or go to the government isolation. I'm also pushing government isolation because I think we've done 90% home isolation and, uh, you know, that's another place where you hear stories, you know, whether they're staying home like they're supposed to be. Right. and um, Or not even that. Or, I, or, are we just spreading it to our families? Right. You know, I, 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 I'm hoping people will rethink that. And, and I, I urge public health at my public hearing to do everything they can to get people into government isolation so that they have the nurses there too who can take care of those with comorbidities, which we keep hearing about. These are the people at high risk. So bring them in where somebody is really going to monitor them very well. Yeah, like, well that, that's exactly so what we're, we're seeing, Senator, is with this rapid engagement team. They're, they're, one of the reasons they say they're going into these um, areas where it's multi-generational families in one household is um, because you get one who gets COVID living in these crowded conditions where they don't have their own bedroom, but they don't have their own bathroom and it's spreading to the whole uh, household. So you're right. Um, we do need to get more people into the isolation facility. Yeah, because I think about, you know, even my family, if, if you know, even with the separate rooms, there's so many room for error you know there's yeah, so much room for error you want to deliver them food you might make an error you know what i mean you got to go then out to the store to get the food for this person these people some of them live alone they don't even have someone to get them food so uh, so many different ways we can be taking care of them yeah if yeah we just i think we need to refocus that remember dr um dr wen also at our pub our letter oversight we had asked them why they are not doing more for those with comorbidities who are testing positive right why are we just letting them go home with covid and be monitored once a day by public health is that enough and they said no of course right we need to some of them need oxygen meters some of them need different things so i'm, I'm glad that after that public hearing Public Health did purchase oxygen meters and they have been doing a little bit more to, you know, get these out to those patients. I think we could do a lot more, you know, that, that out, um, what do they call it? Outpatient COVID clinic or, uh, or whatever, just, you know, or go back to the original theory of have your teams ready in every village to go out and literally monitor, see them, see, you know, give them whatever resources they need, give the entire family PPE so that no one else gets infected in that family. I mean, yeah, really uh, intensify. Talking right. sense. He, we've, we've covered a lot about the isolation facility, but, you know, we still get calls about quarantine yes. protocols and... Mm -hmm. Um, are you getting those sorts of calls, um, about just, uh, how they're being ran? Um, not as much like before about the running of the facility itself with people who are in there, uh, only just the exceptions or non-exceptions. Mm -hmm. I hear more about that. What about, um, do you know the status or even just an opinion on these fines and fees that public health um is planning to implement and how it totally bypassed uh the the legislature yeah it was kind of ironic because we had um crystal and janella on the other day and we said hey what's the status with this fines and fees and they're like oh yeah it's got to go through this process and i was like you guys skipped the whole process and now you're trying to hold up that it's going through this process <laughs> just <laughs> Yeah, it is a little ironic because they they announced it like it was going to be some rapid you know right. emergency be put in without you know so we're bypassing the regular the AAA procedure. process right yeah. yeah so I did attend the two public hearings that they had and um, heard the comments but you know afterward we've been hearing I've been hearing on your station them to saying that they're waiting for legal review which is uh, yeah very confusing I guess for me because that was my first question to them have these been reviewed by your legal already I hope that they were built in conjunction with legal you know Otherwise, yeah, we create the longest way around something, right? And if, yeah, they really wanted to get that done quick, I would hope that they gave us their best product, right? Their best legal, legally enforceable rule. And uh, and then we, you know, can finesse it. But yeah, so doesn't we'll sound see. Like I'm, I'm it. Doesn't those, sound but, like it. Yeah, but, you know, again, those are just tools for us to yeah get the whole community on yeah. the same page. But it, it's... I, I don't know. I, I it's eight months without, in, Senator. It's eight months in, and they're yeah. They're, you're yeah. right. They came on. They're like, we meeting. need this tool now, and now it's like, oh God, no! Someone didn't do their homework. Yeah, we we're 
yeah, it's a, it's easy to, yeah, honestly, just say, oh man, after all this time, but no, I'm never going to give up. So I say that my issue now is, so we have these rules. If you get the rules done and they're in place, it's public health, public health and GPD who are going to enforce these things, right? And public health, we're talking about the same people who you have on your show, the same people who we've been seeing going out, you know, village to village, the same people who've been going business to business, the same people who are reviewing the plans. And uh, yeah, I just feel like some of these, we we need a whole new set of people to do this. And and we've got all these people unemployed and I just wish, you know, there, there've been some progress. Can I just brag about some of the things that public health has done? I know you've talked about it, but I just want to give them kudos. <laughs> The perfect model of what to do is what they've done with UOG and take um, unemployed people who want to become nurse assistants, put them in a rapid, rapid, rapid training, and then put them in the hospitals. It's like the perfect thing to do with, with some of that money, right? And uh, so we get people trained to new skills, new jobs, UOG, and we and expedite it, and then and then we've actually got them in the hospital to help. So I just think we could have, we need help in, in, uh, you know, enforcement, we need help in monitoring, we need help in tracing, and that's, we need to do the same. Right. Um, I wanted to and ask if, if we could just switch gears a little bit here to land, and I just wanted to get your comment on this. Uh, I think it's a uh, Senator Shelton's bill with the University of Guam. Uh, that would allow them to lease all their land for revenue up to 30 years without legislative approval yeah so the bill it was a big um, you know a long bill with different provisions some of which were very good 